Hey everybody, welcome to the Uncommon Truth Podcast. I'm here with the amazing Steve Orsillo. Hey. We are vicky today. Women's retreat. Yep. They're all gone. So last week we didn't have Steve. This week we don't have Vicky, but next week maybe we'll be together. We are in <laughs> estrogen pr- uh, poor zone today. <laughs> it's all testosterone running around lost. Yeah, but we will stumble our way through, I'm sure. We will make it. <laughs> yeah. They get mad if we say it was easy. <laughs> they do. Yeah. At, least, at least my women in my life do. Yeah. Oh, no, it's easy. Yeah. The people are asking me, oh, are you going to, is it going to be hard in the office when we're gone i was like uh, i mean I'm, I'm sure we'll figure it out <laughs> can i pass on that yeah. question i can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> but uh yeah well i think we'll just uh dive in i think i mean there's i don't know what to say other than we're having crazy weather here in california but it's awesome i it's, love these yeah. cool days i feel like i feel like i'm in england though a couple extra been a cool coaster. days before the heat settles in man That's, <laughs> who could complain yeah. about that but last week we had Pam and we talked about uh, healing and trauma and letting go of pain. And I think that was a really good episode. We're going to go back into uh, talking about the message points. So, so far we've covered uh, listen to Jesus, uh, faith without works is dead. And, faith without works is dead. Yep. And uh, we did experience God too. I think so. Yes. I'm, I'm going to trust. What, yeah. I'm going to, re- you know, I got many things to remember. Yeah. I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to say that right. Hopefully I didn't get that wrong. Yeah, I, 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 didn't think ma- you did. I didn't make a list beforehand. So we're going to go with Jeremiah looks excited over there. <laughs> he, he probably has less <laughs> idea than I do. So <laughs> we got to change his name, call him something else. But, uh, we, today we're going to talk about one of your favorites. One of the, I think the messages that's very unique to the Father's house. It really is. Uh, and that is, follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. It sends people a spinning. Yep. So before your head spins, please just take a listen and see what you think. So for that reason, I'm going to start by just reading. I'm going to start in 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to read that. And I'm going to read through a few passages where uh, Paul really makes this point pretty clear to us. So, uh 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, he says, Be imitators of me, just also, just as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you because you remember me in everything and hold firmly to your traditions, just as I deliver them to you. This is Paul again in another part in Corinthians. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 4, 15 and 17. He says, For you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus... I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I exhort you, be imitators of me. For this reason, I have sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, and he will remind you of my ways, which are in Christ, just as I teach everywhere in every church. Another one, this is Philippians 3, 17. Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Philippians 4, verse 9, therefore, I'm sorry, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Quite a promise. Yep. And uh, let's do the one more. For you yourselves, this is uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, 7 through 9. Uh, for you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example, because we did not act in an undisciplined manner among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with labor and hardship we kept working night and day, so that we would not be a burden to any of you, not because we have the right to do this, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you, so that you would follow our example. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five different passages, and there's more if I really... Oh, there's so many more. <laughs> more Said I mean, he is yeah. the one that says it so direct. Yeah. Imitate me yep. as I imitate Christ and you'll be okay. Yeah. Live by the traditions you've seen me live by and you're going to be okay. Yep. That makes people absolutely go bonker bananas yeah. in today's world. Why is that? Because somewhere along the line, you know, we lost track of the fact that Jesus taught 12 and told them to teach others and told them to teach others to teach others Mm -hmm. and the great commission and the great commandment. And so, um, 
It gives so men have abused power throughout time. Mm. Paul's writing this in a time where men abuse power worse than they have ever done it in any life, anyone here on Earth's lifetime, right. anyone here today. In the you know, my great grandfather didn't see men abuse power as bad as Paul lived in times of men abusing power, and yet in today's world. The selfish ideal of it, life is about me. It's my life. It's my you know. I get. I how about me? Um, everybody wants to have that intimate relationship with God that is promised, and that you just say you have it. You have it. You just um, listen to these spiritual voices, and you determine which ones you want to listen to. And the one that says what you want to say, the survey you take. Mm-hmm. And the answer you get from your survey taking that is what you want to hear, that is automatically the Lord. And what Paul is saying is that he has developed a mature walk with Christ that keeps you from being deceived and led astray. And people all feel like they can have that too. And so they just feel like they have it regardless of the fruit. Hmm. You know, Jesus said to examine the fruit of a man. By that you know the tree. And you'll know and no good fruit comes from a bad tree and no bad fruit comes from a good tree. So they want to say, you know, that if I do anything good, I must be a good tree. But what about the fact that I do some bad and some good? Which one am I? And so what Paul is saying is that in my life, in my traditions, in my way, my system of walking this out with God in deciding where the Holy Spirit's sending me, um, there's a great deal, deal of historical evidence that Paul did by counsel. You know, once in a while, the uh, of uh, uh, he has a dream that says, "Come to Macedonia," but for the most part, he is in direct submission to the apostles, mm-hmm. um, Peter and them. And you know, he, we we know that he confronts him once, but m- overall, historically and biblically, he is pretty submissive to those, very submissive yeah. to those apostles. So people today are very freaked out because that power has been abused so bad around them. And people claiming to be good were bad, and people claiming to be leaders were leading astray. And so just like with all things in Christianity, we throw out what's good because someone did it bad. We we don't let ourselves be set free to trust. I, in my life, have had many bad leaders that I know the Lord told me to follow. And in the end, when it's over, when it's done, when it seems like the years have washed it all, and you can look and say, was this a good thing or a bad thing? God always is faithful to the promise that all good thing, uh, that all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. My passion is to follow Jesus, and he says, follow that guy. Then I follow that guy, and he turns out to be bad, mm-hmm. like, like cheating on his wife, like stealing the church's mm-hmm. money, like leading people astray kind of thing. And in the end, uh, what, did I gain or did I lose? And, uh, and always I gain because I know for a fact that I love God and I know that I'm called according to his purpose. I'm a Jesus man. I am a, I am Christian. And so, I, so I'm following men and not, ex, you know, at the same time, I know the teachings of Jesus. So when a man says it's okay for me to be a drunkard, I know better and I just say, no, no, thank you. Hmm. But I still follow him in, in ways that I can say, yes, thank you. So it's not like slavery. It's not like anybody's beating me if I don't listen to him. But I'm letting them teach me and lead me mm-hmm. in a direction. And what's really amazing is that in the end, my relationship with God wins out anyway. My submission is always rewarded. Mm-hmm. And um, I would do anything not to be told to follow people. But it is true that this is what he does. The eye cannot say to the ear, I have no need of you. The body needs all its parts. And when someone is corrupt or someone does something wrong and someone fails at their leadership or they have or they use you to serve them. The thing is, Jesus said we're going to have to be the servant of all anyway. Right. So when they use me to serve them, aren't I still aren't I at least fulfilling the gospel of Jesus Christ? Mm-hmm. Maybe they're not. Right. But then I don't get to judge them. I have to stand before God. The end goal is to become a man that can say to I can look Jeremiah right in the eye and say, you can follow me, you won't get lost. Mm. If you imitate me, you'll be in good standing with the Holy Spirit. If you do what you see me do, you'll know that you're going the right way because I know I'm going the right way. And you can trust me. 
Yeah, in the end, if he finds out he can't trust me, I guarantee you, if his motive in following me was to love Jesus and and to follow the calling of God in his life, it's going to work out good for him. But if it's not, and I'm trying to take advantage of him, and his goal isn't that, he can get really badly hurt by it. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important, if we're going to say, follow me as I follow Christ, that we're trying to teach people how to get to the point where they too can follow Christ, follow him and look at others and say, follow me. And then they can imitate what they've learned in something. They can cause it to be duplicated. Yep. So imitate me as I imitate Christ. Don't imitate me as I follow Satan. Don't imitate me as I sin. Don't yeah. imitate me as I go astray. Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And in the end, I, it's just amazing, but people really freak out about this. I need no man to tell me. And that's actually a verse that says, you need no man. Same guy, Paul, saying, you need no man to tell you what to do. So they'd rather, so instead of imitate me as I imitate Christ, being what you quote, they want to imitate, I need no man to tell me what to do. The Holy Spirit tells me what to do. Holy Spirit reveals it to me. Well, the truth is, he's actually telling them instructions to imitate him. When he says, you need no man to tell you, he's talking about how someone evil is in the church, a guy that's living with his father's wife. His stepmom, he's in a sexual relationship with his stepmom, and he says, you don't need anyone to tell you that's wrong. The Holy Spirit already revealed it to you. So people would rather take that scripture and twist it to be where they don't need anybody to tell them what to do. The Holy Spirit will tell them what to do. And they, they, I mean, that's just not true. All of these verses that Paul's saying, he told Timothy the same thing, and he told Timothy to become a man that others can rightly look at for how to live. They can look at your life and they can say, that's how you follow Jesus. And honestly, that's the message of the Father's house. Let's just all, we're all on a journey. We're all being perfected. As imperfect as I am, I'm still looking at you you saying, I will not betray you. I will not let you down. You will not find me cheating on my wife. You won't find me stealing money from the church. You won't find me living differently than I told you to live. And um, you can trust me. And so... The whole goal, why? Why? So you can have lots of servants? No, I, I want zero servants. I want I want to take no advantage of you. I want to serve you, teaching you how to live for Jesus. So why then? So that you can become a man that can look at others. Yeah. And then we can have, pretty soon you have a whole crowd of people following Jesus. What we have here at the Father's House is is super hard to duplicate. Following me as I follow Christ, and then others saying to others, follow me as I follow Christ, and people learning how to be leaders that can be trusted and won't let you down. When you you come here, it's just, it is remarkable. I sit in awe of what we have here, this team working like we're working, all working for Jesus, Mm -hmm. all doing this for Jesus. And whenever somebody starts to break this, this one right here gets broke down. Someone betrays, like you find we have found in the past a pastor that was not living right you know and he and people were wounded especially young women who've been abused by men they were just wounded by him being false right and yet we were able to save all of them not one person was lost over that event because we believe strongly that you really blew it dude and you got to ask every you know he had to go through this whole process of of, for, of letting people be forgive, uh, receive, giving people his forgiveness, yeah. and then asking them for theirs, yeah. and uh, it was it was just it was remarkably supernatural to watch that watch that process unfold, and we didn't lose anybody, and uh, it was it was whenever something like that happens in this kind of atmosphere, it's crazy, and how quickly someone can just go into a dinner party and start questioning the imitation, you know, like, we don't want to follow him. He's not true. Right. He's not, he's dishonest. There's, this is what they sometimes say, there's something obviously wrong. Nobody can keep this, nobody can live this standard. And you're like, well, you said obviously, but what, but what about some facts? What about some reality? And all you're doing is twisting people. All you're doing is planting seeds of doubt. If there is something, go ahead and tell us. Like someone brings one of my pastors, this guy's, you know, I caught him stealing. Okay, sh- tell me the story. Because if you caught him stealing, he's really not living up to his calling. So tell me the facts. And where did this, no, 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 I don't know. I never caught him. I just heard he might be. <laughs> well, you said it as a fact. 
you're planting seeds of doubt. Now, now people following him are going to trust him. They're not going to change. They're not going to get on solid ground. This is really bad, and this is what the church does. This is what this is pretty much in my forty-eight years of walking with him. This is what I've seen the church do to itself. You know, it it, it robs each other of the trust we need in each other to do this very thing. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. You can find a million books tearing Paul apart. How he's anti-woman. He's racial. He's racist. You can just, I mean, you can find all kinds of writings tearing Paul down so that we won't trust Paul. Right. Someone on the phone the other day from a long, long time back, you know, when I knew them, they were just the consummate pastor, so full of love, so full of giving. And they tried to convince me on the phone the other day that Paul was not true. Oh. And I'm like, oh, brother, I, I decided I already, I already did all this. I'm a long time ago decided Paul is true. Could be my favorite human being that's ever lived, you know, my hero of life. Is Paul Paul of Tarsus, formerly Saul of Tarsus, mm-hmm. of the Apostle Paul? I mean, I, I, yeah, you can't convince me bad about him. He laid down his life for Jesus, and the, so that's why I think that's why people so often end up really head spinning when I when they see our point. Follow me as I follow Christ. Trying to build a kingdom to yourself. No, the the truth is, I'm trying to be the servant to all. That's right. When I say follow me, I become your servant, not you my servant. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, that's Jesus. I mean, Jesus' example of that to us, and he said, you know, in the he used the example of washing the disciples' feet right. to, to prove a, a point that he's saying, you know, you need to become the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and will become the servant of all, right? And I, I think that you know, there's a side of it that you've talked about that people have maybe been hurt by people that tried to lead, but there's the other side of the coin i think today is that maybe we don't want to take personal responsibility for our brother to say you can trust me we want to just do our thing and have you do your thing and i don't want to take you know own responsibility right right, right. i'm not it's not my fault you yeah. screw up right when the truth is the bible if you're going to be a leader in the christian yeah. church um it isn't your fault when they screw up it's your fault if you allow them to think they're okay screwing up yeah it's like terrible. It's a terrible situation. Like I have to tell you this. Yeah. But the man, you know, man rising up to be willing to say this. You know, you can you can walk with me. I I won't let you down. You know, there's a mm-hmm. there is a when you say those words, somebody like you can trust me or you can follow me. There's there's a weight on that that you're taking on, and you know, you, you, Jesus says some things like, you know, it's better for you to what put a millstone around your neck and be thrown into the sea than it is to cause one of these to stumble, right? So there, there's some, you know, making this statement isn't something that someone should just say lightly, right? They got to right. be, but then at the same time, we can't be afraid of it. So when, what would you say, uh, if somebody feels like they're called to lead and how would you advise them to make a statement like this to somebody or what, what was, what's the like I, I wouldn't standard? Have... What's the, I guess what's, I guess my question is what's the standard to be able to make a statement like this? What would you say? To know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can yeah. have someone following you and not let them down. Hmm. I won't give into my flesh. I won't, I won't use you for my benefit. I will let you serve just like I will serve. But the, the idea of becoming a leader of others is am I willing to become your servant? Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you're unworthy. If I don't become your servant, you cannot, you can't have the the kingdom of heaven. And so if you don't let Jesus be your servant, which means what he was saying to them, if you don't let me pay the penalty for your sins, if you don't let me come and serve your sentence, you can't have the kingdom of heaven, Peter. No. Well, if you're going to wash my feet, wash my body also. It's like, no, you're missing the point, right? And it's, he doesn't, that's not what you do at dinner parties. You wash their feet. And you have a servant wash their feet. Well, I'm the servant washing your feet. Will you let me be your servant? Yes, I will. You'll let if you'll let. So then, when you turn around to let to say to others, you know, uh, uh, follow me as I follow Christ. You're saying, Will you let me be your servant? Will you let me serve you? Will you let me teach you what I know? Will you let me demonstrate for you how to walk this out? Will you let me show you how to be humble? Will you let me show you how to be in self-control to walk by the fruit of the spirit. I think that's kind of what, yeah, that's good. you know, would be the answer to that. I think, and you know, when I, when I read this, I, I think of the, the idea that Jesus started, like he said, with his, with his 12, he taught that then we're going to go teach others that we're then going to teach others. 
was to create like a an unbroken chain right of he said it now they say it and they're doing it and if you go you know five six seven eight steps out the idea is that they should still be saying the right. same thing doing the same thing right the mm-hmm. same traditions the same practices but one of the things we see which i think is what causes some of the trouble with this message or some of the the, the fear in this message is, is that once it gets a step or two away from the first example people start changing things as to well i think this right and trying to share that their own example their own traditions and that can cause confusion as people get hurt and lost and, and led astray so how do we like i don't know maybe it's ego maybe it's ambition maybe it's pride but how, how do we how do we humble ourselves to christ's example to, and know that we're not saying just my opinion is this but really following the scripture well, you got to know the scripture. Yeah. You got to read it. You got to see the fruit of it in your life. I, I have found that the vast majority of interpretation of scripture doesn't even make sense mm-hmm. when, when lit up with others. You know, the, and the marrying of the two covenants really makes things confusing. And people are confused. They really are. So I think that it's really, really. Uh, it is really scary to, you know to speak with an authority of of the Bible unless you really know it hmm. and you really understand the the covenants and the purpose of the new and the old covenant and and the revelation of God the whole bible is about one thing it reveals god hmm. the book of the last book in the bible is called the revealing of jesus christ and if you just let it reveal him to you let these things come to you say oh He's really teaching us how to have the kingdom of heaven. And the work is, when, it, when it's, it is finished on the cross, it's like the job is complete. Mm-hmm. It's like you have qualified. It's qualified finished. And everybody says, so therefore I'm quali- he, he qualified for me. Yes, but he qualified for you to qualify is what it is. He may, see, it was impossible for you to, be in, to walk in the kingdom of God. I think that it, it it's really possible with Jesus to walk in the kingdom of God. But without the without Jesus it's impossible. He qualified us mm-hmm. if we will follow him. Any man hears these words of mine, acts upon them. Mm-hmm. If you don't love me more than mother, father, brother, sister, you can't be my disciple. If you don't divorce yourself from all your possessions if you don't remove yourself from all your possessions willing to give them to god for him to use you can't be my disciple he says all of these things it's so many if you don't deny yourself pick up your cross follow me you can't and what did he mean by follow me he meant imitate me and so that's what paul's saying here imitate me be imitators of me as i teach you how i imitate jesus who who says in his words that he imitates the father and it just gets passed down and i think that the words, the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, that's where I'm the most vulnerable. Like, I might teach you wrong. Mm. I, I am not all, all wise. I'm not all-knowing. And I'm, I mean, it's possible. I will never, ever teach you wrong on purpose. Mm. Even if it says we have to pluck our eyes out, I won't fail to tell you. I'll tell you, you know. What it really says is if you're, I causes you to sin, you're better off. Well, if it's finished, what do you even worry about that? <laughs> no, you have to qualify to be qualified by Jesus. You have to come and believe in him and follow him. And and somebody's got to imitate somebody. And he says, imitate, you know, be imitators of him. You know, be the the Paul says, be imitators as me as I imitate Christ, so that one day you can be imitators. Mm-hmm that others follow to Christ so that they can be imitators so that others follow to Christ. And I'm not sure I kept your question no, that's good. Uh, in the answer, yeah. but just the idea of, uh, I, don't what, I don't fully remember what I asked now, but <laughs> the, the following, like how, how do you keep that message alive? Like that, you know, if I'm following, and I guess this is a question a little bit as me as a, as a follower of somebody, how, how do I keep true to what I'm being taught and not just try to reinterpret it in my own way? Well, do you want to be Christ-like? Yes. And you read the Bible? Yes. And it's sometimes 
you see me acting a certain way and you go, oh, or you hear me teach something, you go, wow, I had never looked at it that way before. Correct. Right? Yep. So I pinch myself. I'm shocked at what comes out of my mouth. I'm shocked at what I do know and the things that I don't know that God shows me. And it's because, I believe it's because I took on the job. I said, okay, I, I see the job of imitating you and then being the guy that people can imitate. The guy who says, look at my life and imitate me. I'm imitating what I see Paul do. I'm imitating his imitation of Jesus. I'm imitating Jesus. And then what is commonly said to me on a just absolutely regular basis, this is I've never heard that scripture taught that way. I'm thinking, man, I, I haven't either. It just, you know, it's stuff that really started to reveal itself and be be exposed, you know. Like, and it's nothing new. Even the, the, the schools of prophets in the Old Testament, they were intended to follow the lead. Samuel's students were supposed to imitate Stan, Samuel. Right. Elisha was told, you know, keep your eyes on me. And if you see me be taken up, you'll get the answer to your prayer. All of these different things. I mean, they, they go throughout time. There's a million more. Yeah. Um, and it's like, if you take on the job, it's like, it's not like this. I've arrived, you know, bow at my feet. I sit here and you all take care of everything. It's like the job is on. It's on now. It's like, ooh, <laughs> if you fall in a ditch, I might be responsible for you falling in the ditch. You might have followed what I told you and slipped and fell in a ditch. What am I going to do? Yeah, I got to make sure that how I explain it and what I say is something that won't cause you to fall. I remember I told someone to tithe one time, and I have no idea how they got the idea. I mean, I did the whole, if you tithe two months, three months, and mm -hmm. you're not better off. If you don't see, a, even even if it's nothing more than just peace in your finances, I'll give you all your money back. Mm -hmm. And they, they got to the end of the three months. You know, they didn't ask for their money back. But they About a month in, they said, all right, we're, we're, we're upside down. We can't even have any food. We can't make our car payment. And I'm like, that's because you gave 10% away. You, you can't make your car payment, don't have any food. You know, that's because you gave away 10%? Well, no. It's because because we tithed, we thought it was like a hundredfold return. We're gonna, so we went out and spent like crazy. <laughs> I said, well, you didn't listen to me. You didn't, or I didn't, or I didn't communicate. The tithe is so that it will rain in due season, that your harvest will come in in due season. I thought, oh, the, nobody ever told you it's a vending machine yeah. where you put in 10% and get out $100 bills right. to go, f to go, you know. Well, they got it straight. They eventually corrected that, got out of that mess and started tithing properly, you know, not. And, and then began to see that their 90% did make their life improve. Their rain, their harvest did come in mm -hmm. and they did begin to see things like better jobs, rebates and returns, mm -hmm. things coming to them that never came to them before, you know like finding the hundred dollar bill on the sidewalk or, or just, you know, just different things, you know, with things that just, wow. Yeah. Lucky you, you know, that was awesome. Um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. No, that's really good. So as if you, you know, you, you said yourself, you, you spent your life, uh, following different leaders and not, and most of them or many of them not good. Some real good though. Some really good, but the mixed bag of, well, that can be, but what, um, what are some of the hallmarks of a good follower, a good imitator? Like, you know, how, how if someone's listening to this and they're, you know, they're part of a church, they have a, a leader or a pastor over them, like, and how, how did they, how can they help this process? How nobody can, wants to help. Nobody wants to hear this, but it's just like humans. Let's say today, today alone, I hold my baby, a baby granddaughter. And then later, I help my seven-year-old granddaughter across a busy street. And then later in the day, my 32-year-old daughter calls and asks my advice. And then later in the day, my, let's say my father calls me, and he just became a new Christian. Mm -hmm. I, the response to everybody, the, the, the amount of help everybody needs is different. And the, um, the, di the, the level of following is totally different. I remember when my dad first got serious to become a Christian and 
And, you know, he'd been kind of anti me and my brother's Christianity for a while. Um, he would want to sit down and really prove to me what the Bible says. Hmm. And I would never engage. It was just like, you know, I would want to talk more about how life works following Jesus. What's funny is at the end of his life, when I said, okay, I want to sit down and let's talk about this, because obviously you're 88 and you, I don't want to happen anytime soon, but we've got to talk about this. It was really clear that he trusted my Christianity. Mm-hmm. Like he would even say, you know, uh, you, I want you to do my memorial. And I'm the youngest, so I said, well, here, Dad, you got to tell, my, you got to tell your brother, your, uh, you got to tell my siblings yeah. that you're choosing the youngest to do your memorial. And luckily enough, he told the oldest who told the others. But uh, nonetheless, he, he grew in respect because I lived what I believed. And I, um, it, so I couldn't, my, my dad is not the kind of guy you teach as a son. Mm. The youngest son doesn't teach his dad. So the way I'd respond to my own father was so different than the way I would my daughter. Even at 32, she's still the baby whose diaper I changed and who I helped cross the road. The seven-year-old granddaughter's at a different place in life and needs different kinds of help than the newborn baby. And everybody should be treated the same. And and if you're going to be a follower, you have to identify that you're probably starting out as a baby. Now, we grow way faster in spiritual than a human does. But everybody needs to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord. For every minute you hear false teaching on hearing the voice of the Lord, for every time you follow the wrong voice, it just it just elongates, it stretches your need to learn to trust someone else to hear with you and, and for you. I have people tell me, I had this guy walk up and say, yeah, the Lord told him to go to this town and go to their police academy and become a cop in that city. And I'm just, I mean, I knew this is like, this is the worst thing this guy could ever do. I heard, you know, talk him out of it. I mean, I just, I knew the Lord was not telling him to go to Toronto, Mm -hmm. go to, yeah, Toronto Mm -hmm. and and become a cop. Mm -hmm. I I was like, oh my gosh, big city, inner city policing. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, just not, not, not in this guy's cards, Mm -hmm. nor is it what God's plan for his life was. Mm -hmm. Being the shepherd of his life, I, I knew that God would share with me. And I've had teenagers come and tell me, you know, that they're going to go be a movie star. Or they're going to go be a, you know, they're going to go work in Disney World and mm-hmm. all these things. You talk to them, or I'm going to go to this university or that university. And you say, you understand their philosophy will destroy you. And there's so much guidance people, different people need. Get back to my dad. He didn't need my guidance on all that stuff. He just needed somebody who lived their faith in front of him so that he could go, hmm, that's how it's done. And it's more of a follow me as I follow Christ from father to a son really is much more different than... Or son to the father. Than, uh, well, he was following me, yeah, father right. to a yeah, son. Yeah. yeah, Father following his son is way different yeah. than, especially when you are uh, the kind of driven man my dad was. You know, he's just like, you know... He's not going to, you're not going to teach him. Yeah. You're not as his son. And I respected that, but he had to learn from me nonetheless. And so it was a totally, it's a totally different thing that he had to do. And just being the servant of all is just, it's uh it really is very difficult for people to put that into their life, understand that self comes last mm-hmm. in a world where self is first in everything. And the world is teaching you. The world is influencing you. Every commercial is telling you self comes first. And Jesus is saying, su- submit and surrender self to the control of others. And every type of person walking with Jesus has a different level of need for imitation and following. That's really good. Uh, someone has been, so uh, let's say the seven-year-old continues to let me help her all of her life and at her 18, let's say she gets married at 19 Mm -hmm. and at her wedding, as her father is handing her into her new husband's hands, you know, if she has followed, she at 19, she could be a woman who says to others, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, I was 19 when I first became a youth pastor, which was imitate me. You know, I had, Oh wow. I got these kids in my hands. I used to, my prayer used to be, Lord, don't let me hurt them. I'd look at these kids and I'd say, oh, my gosh, I, they put me, they made me the pastor. <laughs> I am not arrived. Yeah. And I said, would you please allow me, not, if I can't help them, 
Please keep me from hurting them. I think that's the perfect pastoral prayer. I've kept that prayer my whole life. Yeah. Don't let me hurt them, Lord. And I think that that's the, the proper attitude of a follower is to say, you know, I need help. I either need help crossing the road, I need help understanding how you live as a Christian, or I'm a baby and I still need I still need the bottle and the diaper change. I need I need to be completely taken care of as a baby. And I just don't think we teach people that anymore. It's like you like they say, I believe, okay, you've arrived. Mm-hmm. Now you can hear the Holy Spirit and follow him. I'm not saying that's not possible. Paul the Apostle got completely born again on a street but he, what people don't know is that his history his future was that he went and learned from the apostles for three years right. he was 14 months or something in the wilderness yeah. being taught by the holy spirit who then said okay because he was so superior to them in intellect in in station right. class all of those things and he had to go submit to some fishermen and tax collectors and be taught by them how to follow jesus and so he was 14 months getting prepared to follow. And that's where he learned to imitate me as I imitate yeah. Christ. So Paul went through all of that, you know. That's good. You uh, you know, one of, one of the things I was thinking that you're sharing about, you know, recognizing we needing help, we need help. Then another part of that is not just asking for advice, but then doing what we want anyway, <laughs> but actually <laughs> like putting the the things into practice, because I think that's the you know, as that's, you, a, that's yeah. a downfall of most people is that they only follow in where they agree. Right. When you find the person whose fruit is such that you want to follow, you want to say, I'm going to follow you. Will you be my pastor? Will you be my spiritual mm-hmm. father? You're, you're, you know, you're saying, I'm going to follow what you tell me even when I disagree. Mm-hmm. When you only follow what you agree with, then you are really only following yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're only, okay, I heard that, I agree with this, I'll go. Now, the, you're following you only. And I have found very few people to make it very successfully following themselves. I really have. Very, very few. Yeah. Follow themselves and successfully arrive at adulthood Christianity, mature, imitate me as I imitate Christ kind of position. And that's what I promise the people here at the Father's House in the school. Follow me as I, follow me, walk with me a couple of years. And you'll like your life and you'll like yourself better. Hmm. Then decide, am I someone you could follow and learn how to follow Jesus hmm. and really learn how to lay your life down and be a servant of all? Um, and, yeah, you know, they do. That's really good. I think that's a good place for us to, to land the plane. But I, I just want to read, read one of these scriptures that Paul says. He says that this is Philippians 4, 9. He says, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. I love that, that's it. A, that's a instruction with a promise right there. And, you know, often we want the promise without the instruction. No, but. we definitely don't. <laughs> Especially the part about doing, you know, yeah. what we don't agree with. Yeah. I remember a guy told me that I told him that I'm always right and he's always wrong. Oh, boy. I like, I'm like, I don't think I've ever said those words to a human being on earth. <laughs> I, I, I know for a fact I don't believe that, but yeah. I said that to you. He said, yeah. He, and he's given credit for that's what saved his life. Over the next four years, he disagreed with me all the time. He was positive I was wrong all the time. And and I was like, why is he doing so well? You know, like all of a sudden, he was terrible for years. Yeah. Couldn't listen to, he couldn't listen to nothing, man. You, you couldn't have him around. He was disruptive. And then one day when he says, what do I do to have what you have? He says, I said that. And I'm just so thankful that's what he heard. And <laughs> if I said it, then I don't remember it. But now this guy is just the hero of the world, man. He's the hero to his children who are all growing up. His wife loved him, has loved him for a lifetime. And he's like, he's cherished by the job, his, his job bosses, you know, and um, prospered, you know, just, just a lovely man. And uh, he told me I said that to him and that he was thanking me. And I'm like, uh, I'm trying to deny I ever said it, but he's thanking me. So I like, let's take some credit here. Anyway, so I said, wow. And, and, and I had to admit, that's, that explains now how you lived. Yes. You really thought that was the standard between us, that I'm always right and you're always wrong. And he did it, and I was amazed. I really was amazed. I just, I love the guy. 
and not there's not a handful of people that can do that. You're always right, and I'm always no. wrong. And he was adamant that I was wrong. He'd just get it in his head, man. He'd be staring at me, glaring at me, and I'm like, "What's wrong?" And he'd tell me, and I'd explain what I'm saying. But he was so convinced I was wrong, and he did it anyway. And his life just kept going the right way. And I said, "Now that guy followed." Mm-hmm. Because he didn't agree with me about much of anything. <laughs> and yet he, he made that commitment. He went forward and his life was, um, I mean, he just really has, he's, he's, he's carved out a niche in his life. He loves Jesus. Mm-hmm. He's te- his children love Jesus. His wife loves Jesus. It's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's an instruction with a promise. And if we can follow through with it and not, you know, just take a couple steps and want to take back control is that's, that's, right. that's good for you. You know, it's, I can say, uh, you know, I've been around the Father's house for 13 years-ish right uh-huh. now. And, wow. You know, um, there's following, listening, you know, exam- following your example has definitely shaped me into being someone that's able to ma- say that statement. And people now say, you know, that following me has helped them and I know that then the people following them. So see, being part of that process is nothing that I would give up or trade, you know, that just learning to follow Jesus through following somebody else following Jesus has set me up for success, you know. So yeah. for those of you out there listening, you know, whether it's you considering coming to do School of Transformation and, and learning practically from through what we do, you can go to transformationschool.org and see about that. Or we have uh online course we have lots of different ways if you go to transformationschool.org you can learn about that and we'd love to um, give you a a more intensive teaching on this whole thing and have your life become set free and fruitful and all the good things they promise us and these these are about the messages of the father's house we pared it down to 10 messages and that doesn't mean i mean we just want every one of our sermons and teachings to really be teaching these principles yeah. and follow me as I follow Christ is the most important and the most rejected mm-hmm. of all of our teachings. And uh, it really is difficult to do. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening and we will see you next time. Bye.